This is a teaching moment. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. It's Hesiod. Once again. In the last episode, we took a look at our team that is going to play on our pitch of the case. And now it's time to go for the real deal. We are starting the assembly and I hope it's helpful for you. So let's get things going. All right, so here we are. I have prepared some things. Uh, actually, it's just one thing. Uh, make sure to use the box that comes with your motherboard to support the process of installing the components on it before you put it in the case. Um, it is anti-static and it will prevent your surface that you work on from being scratched. The first thing that we are going to do is install the CPU. And that's actually quite easy. The first thing we are going to do is push this lever down here a little bit, this little handle, and then we can do this. Once you've opened the CPU socket, which this is called, make sure that the pins, you don't touch the pins, which are in here and have a look at them are any bent or anything but in this case it doesn't seem to be the case so we are going to go with that the next thing that we are going to do is pick up our CPU and we are going to insert this the important thing is there is a triangle up here and a triangle down here on the socket so we want to line that up so put that in Has a little bit of a wiggle but that's fine then we're going to close the socket and be aware this plastic cover will pop off once we have installed the CPU okay it didn't pop off but it can so that's the first step that we are having done now I am going to take this plastic cover and put it in uh, the packaging that came with the motherboard. So next up we are going to install the NVMe drives that came. I do have a Gen 5 one and according to the um, manual of the motherboard this is where this should go and we are going to loosen the screws and put that in right there immediately. So take out the screws. This is the heatsink. We are going to reinstall that in a second and then we are going to take the, uh, the NVMe drive and put that in. We are just going to take the heatsink here. It's important to remove this here, otherwise there might be some melting going on and we don't want that. And secure the screw, screw as well. Make sure it's secure. Seems to be the case. Nice. Next up, we have another NVMe drive that I want to install. I have this lying around. Uh, it's a Samsung 980 Pro, which was in my PlayStation, but I don't actually really need it there. And it's going to be nice for uh, additional storage for video editing, which is why I'm going to deinstall this heatsink over here. because we do have actually four N, uh, M.2 uh, places that we can go with this. Uh, but the thing is that uh, I only need two, but it's nice to have extra. So if I want to go totally berserk and overboard, I can do that, which I really like. That's something nice about this motherboard, definitely. Uh, because this one has its own heatsink, we are just going to line this up here we're not going to reinstall the heatsink this time. We're just going to go with this. And then we're going to take a screw that came with the, uh, come on, the 
came with the uh, motherboards. Here we are. All right. Okay, a little bit more. Still wiggly, which we don't want. So if you are going to install yours uh, without a heatsink, if it doesn't have a heatsink, don't forget to uh, put up, put out the uh, plastic cover on the thermal pad. Okay. After the storage, it's now time for our memory, which are going to be inserted here. But be aware, um, it's you can't randomly select which bands you want to use. Actually, on my motherboard, we do have a little diagram here that says this bank here and this one should be used first to get optimal performance. And of course, we like optimal performance. We want to actually do that. So you want to take your um, RAM sticks, your DIMMs, and then you want to insert them there. Be aware that you can't really force. This is the wrong way around, by the way. They won't really actually go in, which is why you have to make sure that they line up with um, the holes in the middle. So you want to insert them the correct way, which is like this. And then it's just some firm pressure. And then you will hear that satisfying click after having inserted the round. It's actually pretty easy. Make sure to line them correctly. And there we go. We have inserted the round. All right, guys. So next step is going to be installing the cooler little funny story I actually didn't have a proper screwdriver in my uh, toolbox so I had to go out and get this little sucker and now we are prepared to do some stuff I also use this screwdriver which is a really nice one by the way uh, to tighten the screws on the NVMe heatsink here and the NVMe drive over here so the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to loosen the brackets for the stock cooler from AMD. Once we have removed all of the uh, remaining brackets, which we just have done, we are going to put these standoffs here. And then we are going to take the brackets that come with the... Mm, wait a second, is this correct? I guess so. So we are going to take these and we're supposed to put them in here. Take the other one. We're gonna fasten them in a second, secure them correctly. This is just to have them there already. And then we're gonna take a screwdriver and tighten them and have them sit there nice and snug. Right, so this seems firm. All right, so next up, we are going to apply thermal paste and or thermal grease, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to go like this. And this. This might be way too much. Thermal paste already. I don't know. I've watched actually quite some videos on this, and there is no actual real method, it seems. Okay, there seems to be everything we have in our tube anyway. Alright, so I suppose. It's time uh, for the heatsink. It's very important. Take off this. 
when you want to install a heat sink and we want to put it over there don't worry about uh, the thermal paste it's going to spread out itself anyway once we have secured the heat sink properly and this might be a little bit finicky we're going to have to screw it here okay we have put this in there so it's secured I'm gonna try and do that on the other side as well okay it seems like we have secured both sides so we want to alternate between the two of them and we have reached our limit over there and well look at that just really nice and snug next up are the fans that need to be installed because passive cooling isn't just good enough with this thing we want to make sure that we want the logo to face where the ink comes in which is here the air take is going to be on this side of the uh, of the case and the motherboard is going to sit right up there I'm just putting on these here which come of course with the uh, with the cooler because somehow you have to install these wait a second I did wrong <laughs> okay this is just don't quote me on this because we want the cable here to go over there which means so put these in there and now they're in and we want to, this to go like this so this one is going over here and like this All right so this is going to be a little bit more difficult which is why I'm doing this first and there we go so the first fan is installed time for the second one you might see that I went with the cheapest option which are the gray fans over here I really don't care that much because my computer is going under my desk it's not a showpiece so I went with the cheapest option which is 30 euros 30 euros for this this cooler is just that's just a it's just maddening how good that price is so guys this is definitely an absolute no-brainer if you want to go with a air cooling which you should do because if you don't want to overclock or anything like that then air cooling is the way to go and would you look at that it's a good thing that I went with these come on you can do it so. The first clip in. To take this, go for the other side. So, if you don't want to overclock, and even if you want to overclock, air cooling is absolutely enough. It's, if you go with water cooling, it's more like a, a static decision. So, there you go. All right, so these clipped into place seems firm and steady facing the right direction one more thing that we have to do with this cooler which is so there is this daisy chain over here which we are going to use of course we are putting Matter. That badly. And we're gonna put 
this in over here. Perfect. And then we are going to take this daisy chain thing and we are going to put it on the downside here, I suppose. And then we're done. One last thing, when you install your cooler, make sure to put it in the right direction, uh, in, the, in the right spot, because um, I put it in the down left one, in the, uh, in the bottom one. The upper one would be for water cooling, which I don't use, so I think, yeah, it seems like it's pretty nice out here, so that's a good thing. All right, we are all set with the things on the motherboard for now at least. We are going to install the GPU too, but we are going to do that once it is in the case. Right now we are done with the thing and we are going to uh, put it aside and we are going to start to prepare the case. All right, so this is the case uh, as it was shipped. I'm going to prepare this now a little bit at least. I'm going to, going to take off the top and I'm going to uh, make some other adjustments because right now it is in water cooling mode and I will have to put some screws in other places which I'm not going to show you because it's just boring. So see you in a second then. All right guys, so here we are. I have prepared the case. A little funny story by the way. I actually took a break for two days right now because it was holidays here in Germany and I lacked this here. This is a very long screwdriver as you can see and I needed that because I had to flip the AO shield, the IO shield over here. I had to flip that around to get this thing into uh, air cooling mode and also these standoffs here they were down here and maybe you can see it if you zoom in or something or maybe I will zoom in so there are these arrows pointing up that's for air cooling mode and in default this case uh, comes with water cooling mode which is the arrow pointed down and I had to take care of that and I needed this incredibly long screwdriver for that and well that was an ordeal I can say doesn't matter though because right now we are about to install the motherboard and we are going to do that right away and afterwards we are going to start um, taking these uh, taking these cables and put them on the motherboard so let's get started take the motherboard which I have over here and we are going to This is wrong. This is not supposed to be here because that's what the IO shield is. So we are going to take that over there and then we are going to put the IO shield in place, which should be. around here if I'm not mistaken yeah looks good and now we are going to take the screwdriver and put in the screws Alright, so that's it, the motherboard is secured in the case, nice and tight. Make sure to not over tighten the screws that you use because you can damage your motherboard if you do. The next thing that we are going to do is do some cabling between the case and the motherboard. I have already put in the cable for the rear fan over here, it was really finicky and I forgot to uh, record it so you'll have to forgive me 
but I don't really care and I don't want to do it again so I'm not going to do that. So we are going to do the same for the front fans on the upper side over there. So I will have to come around and then it's important this is for the CPU fan. We are not going to use that one. We are going to use these cables over here and we are going to put the first fan for the case on here and the second one right over here. Make sure to face them the right direction. There is a notch. Alright, so we have done that. And next up is the USB-C header for the front panel. So we are going to insert that. Alright. And then we have the USB uh, 2 point, no it's 3.0 for the front panel. These are going to go in like these. You have to be careful to not bend the pins. And putting these in. Come on, you can do it. Next up is the audio header over here. We want to put this over here, facing up. It's nice and tight. Cool. And then uh, this is for the power button and the reset button. Uh, Luckily, that Dante and Cool put this all in one place, so we just have to put this one in. In your case, you might have to check because these cables come all separately, powering, resetting, and stuff. But luckily for us, we don't have to deal with that. We just have to put these in like these. And then for the time being, we're done. Okay, so it's time to pre-assemble the power supply, which is modular. I've already started a little bit. As you can see, we have this back here, and we do have these connectors for the motherboard, which is a 40, 24 pin connection, I think it's called. I don't really know, to be honest. Way too much of a new. So, uh, there are there is this cable for the motherboard then we do have two cables for the CPU and it's important that I connect them correctly but as you can see you can't really mess it up this is the end that goes into the power supply and this is going to go into the motherboard for the GPU and we will have a second one which is basically for overclocking which I'm not going to do but can't hurt to have all the cables installed so this is going into the power supply and one of these is going to connect with the motherboard for the CPU and after we have done that there are three PCIe cables PCIe cables as you can see this one here has a splitter as you can see but uh, it doesn't matter because we will run three of these uh, of these suckers into the power supply like this this is the end that goes in there and then we are going to connect all three of them to this over here which is the oh, 12 hpwr high power connector or whatever it is called for the graphics card we are going to connect all of these in here and this is going to click into the graphics card to make sure that we have enough um, uh, enough juice for our gpu so I'm going, just going to start and connect all of these to the power supply. So this is a CPU. I'm going to join the CPU ones up here. And this is also a CPU one, I think. Yep, that's a CPU one. So we are going up here. Make sure they sit in nice and tidy. 
Uh, one last thing. This is a so-called SATA Molex, apparently. It, it came with a power supply, but since I don't use any SATA drives or RGB, I don't care for those and I'm just going to put them back in the box. Alright, so next up is the PCIe cable. I'm going to connect this right here. Here. And last but not least, this one right over there. All right. So we got this cable here. Not this one, but this one. This one, this one, and this one. These we want to connect to this one so we are going to do that immediately so I won't forget so number one this is number two are you kidding me clicked into place which is nice and now we have the third one that goes in here and it clicked into place oh, look at this abomination man it's just just for the GPU are you kidding me Oh, and this came off. Great. <laughs> great. Just great. Just great. Okay. We have good we're in for a good start here, it seems. Secure, 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 secure. Okay, they're all secure. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the power supply into the case. Make sure to secure this. This is very important. It's your goalkeeper after all, right? So here we are. I have prepared pretty much everything. So we have to install these last cables and then we will have to put in the GPU, which is going to be a lot of fun. So let's get started. Alright, so it took a while, it was really finicky, but I hope and I think that everything should be fine now. So it's time for the GPU. Okay, so here she is. You look at her, oh my goodness, I forgot to take off the tape. Now I have done so. So this is our if you, uh, this is our RTX 4090. We are going to cram that in there. But before we can actually cram her in, we will have to use this here. It comes with a friggin' support bracket, can you imagine? It's so heavy that it, maybe it doesn't really need that thing, but I will install it anyway because it might sag and that's going to be just not that great. So, all right, let's go. So what we are going to do is we are going to take this puppy like this and then try to line her up. Have I forgotten? Yes, I have. Don't forget to open up here. 
like I just did because that's just plain unintelligent so don't do that okay so we have lined her up and she's in which is great the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to install this bracket over here so she won't sag Okay, it seems like everything is in line. So the last thing to do is take this cable over here and we want to line that up with this over here. And I put her in. Hopefully hear that. There's the click. I hope we have enough clearance over here, but everything seems to be fine. So, there's one thing left to do, and that is cable management. So I'm gonna spare you that, I'll just try to tidy up the cables in the back. In the front everything seems to be quite fine actually, so that's a good thing. No, everything is fine, right? So, if you want to know if this thing is actually going to fire up, you'll have to tune in next time.